It's been a long day. You feeling okay? Got some energy for us, a little storytelling. We're hoping that what we talk about now is going to impact you directly in how you communicate with others and how you share your stories. So I asked two of my friends to come join me today, who I think are excellent storytellers, story sharers. And I could go through their bios and give you the Emmy nominations, the Oscar nominations, the top 10 women in business list they've been on. But you wouldn't remember if I gave you all those facts and figures, because those go right out of our head. But if I tell you a little story about each of them, I think you might remember it. So I'm going to start with Mara. And I've known Mara for years. Um, she created the Forbes Women's Platform, which is a fantastic venue for women to share their stories and to be heard and to stand out in the field for what they have accomplished. And I've seen her at all these events, and she's always the complete professional, you know, Davos, that night at Davos, Davos, if you've never been, it's crazy. It's um, the world's leaders, billionaires, helicopters coming and going, people walking down the street, machine guns, world leaders, it's crazy. And I was in the hotel and I was like, um, I can't get into the party. <laughs> and I texted you and you like actually texted me back and sent somebody to come get me. And I came in and there she's at the front of the receiving line you know, greeting world leaders, and she's so polite and calm and collected in the middle of it, always like right on. And a few weeks ago, one of my favorite stories of all is, it was the Forbes 100th anniversary. So they're celebrating 100 years of Forbes. Uh, your father, Steve Forbes, was there. It was a huge, I mean, world leaders, Warren Buffett. It was an incredible array of just the best, and you couldn't believe that people were looking at. And I went out to take a quick call in the afternoon, and I saw Maura rushing in with a few people, and she had she was holding bags of McDonald's. And I was like, is she like a secret French fry <laughs> addict or something? This is really, this is like one of the chicest, on point women all the time, never harried. And she's like running in with bags of French fries. I didn't know what it was, I saw McDonald's bags. So I went and they said, oh, we're gonna have a toast, we're gonna have a toast. And then Steve Forbes was at the front with you and there was Warren Buffett and they had a moment and they shared their love of Big Macs. So obviously Warren Buffett, huge investor at McDonald's, he's known for eating Big Macs and going to McDonald's all the time. And so later when I saw you and he said, you know, it was a moment for them the photo, of course, that ran is them both holding up Big Macs and toasting with their Big Macs. And it was like a great moment for these two titans, like, okay, at the end of the day, we're snacking on a Big Mac, and it brought their story down to another level where you could see it wasn't just two stuffy titans who've changed in the game, but it's two guys who have a sort of fun inside banter amongst themselves. And so when I asked her about it later, she said, I wanted that part of the story to come out. So she orchestrated for the Big Macs to come in, and that's why she was running around with bags, which I thought was French fries, but it was Big Macs for them. And it was a great moment. And I thought, you know, I, I can't forget that moment, and I shared it a few times after that. And the photos that ran with their Big Macs was, you know, a great photo. You know, a picture tells a thousand words. But so I wanted to ask you, you know, you brought that moment to life, but you see some of that. You've interviewed everybody from Oprah to Sheryl Sandberg. You see the greatest storytellers. And what, what do you think about storytelling? Well, I will say trying to get 400 piping hot uh, Big Macs to a room full of the world's billionaires was one of the most logistical, uh, logistically challenging um, accomplishments of my career. So, uh, so you literally did see me running around um, with with bags. It was it was not easy, but we got it done uh, because it speaks to that power of story storytelling. My father loves a Big Mac. He loves McDonald's. He travels the world uh, and and eats at McDonald's. Donald's and so does Warren Buffett, and it, you know people loved it because it defied expectations um, of someone like Warren Buffett, who is you know the world's richest man, the most successful man in the world, and he's also a great storyteller. Uh, so just another one of the, the amazing accomplishments um, that that he has under his belt. But I've been in a really unique position because I've had the opportunity to interview so many different world leaders, and you do hear great stories, and you do hear the canned stories. Um, you hear sort of that typical 
corporate jargon, um, lines that have been rehearsed, stories that have been oftentimes, you know, massaged and whitewashed by PR teams. And so really when, when I have an interview and what makes a great story for my interviews or for the content that we do at Forbes is first and foremost, it has to have a purpose, right? It's got to entertain, educate, or inspire. So a great story has to have some sort of message and mission going into it. Uh, the next thing that's, you know, inherent to a great story is that tension or drama or unexpected surprise. Why do we love the fact that Warren Buffett eats McDonald's literally every single day of his life? He goes through the drive-thru in his nondescript Cadillac in Omaha, Nebraska to buy a value meal, which you know, is something he's into value every sing single day of his life. Why does that story resonate? Because it defies expectations. Um, and so I think that's, you know, inherently important. Um, the next critical factor that we look for all of our stories is what's the human connection? You know, every story has to convey some sort of uh, emotion. And we always look for the me too moment. And what I mean by that is, you know, you could be the, the a world leader, you could be someone like Warren Buffett, the richest man in the world, um, but in their stories, you find a piece of yourself. They may not, you know, they may have completely different life experiences, but it's that me too moment where you find that shared human connection um, and that shared experience. And the last thing we see is the stories have to be genuine. You know, we hear this word authenticity all the time, but fundamentally at its core, a great you know, self-story, a great self-story is a real story about someone's life. Another reason why that Warren Buffett story was so powerful is because it's part of who he is. Literally, McDonald's is who he is in his DNA because he eats it every single day of his life. Um, but, uh, but those are the elements that we see time and time again uh, that capture you know, audiences and are really sticky. They're sticky, you remember them, um, and they impact you in very profound ways. That's so true. So Don Ostroff, when you were back the head of the CW network, Heidi Klum and I came in for a meeting, and it's very stressful when you go in to pitch a network and meet a network head. It's like, you know, they have a very short time to meet with you. You want to get straight to the point. You're thinking, should I make a joke? How can I stand out <laughs> and impact them in some way? How can I be memorable? What can I do? And so we went up to Dom's offices, and she was late, which any major executive will let you wait for a little bit and stew in there. And uh, you sent in other people. Ken Mock came in. I think Tyra Banks came in. It was about America's Next Top Model. And then Dawn came, she was whisked in, and she sat down across from us, and she turned to Heidi and she said, tell me your story. And it was one of those moments where actually, you know, to get to your office, you must have bought all the billboards around your office, yeah? yeah. So the CW, they had all their offices. Remember they had those incredible billboards, it was like OMFG, it was like you changed the way advertising was happening right then around a television show, it was like a media moment. And it was like the show your, your parents don't want you to watch. For Gossip Girl. Yeah, for, for Gossip, Gossip Girl. Girl. But that was like all around your building. So we were like, wow, we're going to see this Titan who's breaking all the rules and everything that's happening. And then you sat down in front of Heidi and you're like, tell me your story, tell me about yourself. And you really put her at ease and you went in pretty quickly to see who she was and what she's about. And I know it's, it's such an incredibly crowded space out there for stories right now. How do you cut through and, and find the good stories and what bubbles up when somebody is telling you a story? Yeah, it's really interesting because obviously, as you say, it's such a crowded um, marketplace right now. But yet at the same time, people are looking for stories on so many different platforms. Because if you think about it, we've only expanded our universe as to where we can find stories. And so what I think is really happening is people are starting to be great storytellers, but in different ways. And they're utilizing all the different technologies that you can now tell stories on, right? So if you think about it, you know, recently a study came out from Google where you know we've learned that particularly Gen Z and, and millennials are watching three and a half hours a day of digital video on their mobile device. Okay, totally different kind of storytelling than if you're telling a story that's a two-hour movie or that it's a long-form uh, television series. But I think what it does is it brings people closer together because it's just different ways of communicating, different ways of sharing people's stories. And um, when you think about the advantage of being able to reach people in so many different ways at all times of the day, 
you know, where you can really communicate to them things that are either, as, as you said before, entertain or inspire or um, inform them. It's really a great time that we're living in. And so storytelling takes on so many different, um, so many different shades and so many different verticals right now. But what strikes me in, in hearing both of you ladies speak is that I also think it's so important for people to think about their own story and how they really communicate Sorry, what story. their story is and, and how they um, really take what their own essence is and be able to communicate it in a short period of time on all of these different platforms. Because you know, whether it be you know, talking to somebody in a business um, in, in a in a business situation, or being able to you know put yourself out there for opportunities, I think it's really important for people to give some thought about what is their own story. Yeah, how, how are they going to? I list? agree with you 100%. I'm in I'm interviewing people all the time, and I think they want to list their resume for me, and they want to tell me, well, I worked here and I worked there, and I had this position, and I was that position, and I was able to sell through this, and I made that, and it's like. I could meet 10 people in a day, and if they all gave me their facts and figures and told me their resume, I won't remember anybody at the end of the day. But if somebody comes in and says, you know, I'm a small town girl from Mississippi, and I made it big in New York City, and this is how I did it, and I believed in myself, and there's got to be some personality in there. I'm not saying you have to pitch a TV show, like Dawn's used to getting these major pitches, but you got to really think about what's your heart and why are you a little bit different than the next person? And I say a lot of times, ask your friends or ask your family members, what's unique about me? And they'll tell you things, and it might be interesting and unusual, but it sort of gets you, your juices flowing. And also I do a trick with my staff. I say, what's your six word story? So sort of like try to distill who you are down to six words, and then you can build it back up from there. But I think people come in with a resume of you know, a laundry list of their skill sets, and it just doesn't resonate, it doesn't stand out. So I love what you were saying, Maura, too, about something, the dissonance in your story. Like, don't be afraid to tell people you failed. Like, you can get in and say, you know, I'm a small town girl from wherever, or a guy, and, you know, I made a false start here, and I got in the wrong job, and I realized it quickly, and I did a ton of research, and I worked really hard, and, you know, I went and did an epic rap battle and I came back and I, I found my true calling and here I am. And that's funny. Okay, so you went to, that's, I would, rem, I will remember you for sure. I also do venture capital investing and people come all day with stories and facts and figures of why their company, sh I wish I'd give them money and we should invest in them. And then at the end of the day, you have to sort of think back to like who was who and what. And in this one day, I heard 10 pitches and one couple came in and said, you know, this is a company we started together. We almost got divorced over it. And then immediately I was like, oh my God, they almost got divorced. And I was like, tell me about it. And I like was so interested. And then they told me, and then the story, and then, and then I was like, I couldn't, I wanted to invest in them because they gave me a story and not, you know, a resume. And I think it's very hard to pull yourself off your resume because you're proud. It's hierarchical. You have degrees. You have things that you've done. But you've got to really push it to the side and come up with story arcs for yourself. We all have heroic stories. Everybody here has a story worth telling, and you got to figure out how to tell it. So, I so agree. And it's also, you know, it's 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 interesting because. The other part of storytelling that we always look for is sort of where's the white space? What stories haven't been told? What stories would be really relevant, but you can't get enough of that subject or that type of content or you know that kind of um, sort of point of view? And the few times in our in my career and sort of in, in our existence within even our company, because um, we're a division, Condé Nast Entertainment, where we make movies and television and digital video for our company and for all of our brands, you know, we're constantly always saying, okay, what's missing out there? And most of the time, if you feel there's something missing, there are a lot of other people feel that there's something missing. And, um, you know, we, we recently just started a a new brand that's mostly video led that's that's on Facebook but we really found a niche right it was 18 to 34 year olds multicultural sort of sense of humor and a, and a unique voice and we started to make content in that vertical telling stories that were so relatable that people would watch it and say oh my god i see myself it's what you were saying before you know that's like oh, I, that's that was my story that that happened to me and the next thing you know especially in today's day and age there were millions and millions, I mean, now it's 
this is brand, it's called The Scene, it's one of the biggest brands in our building, doing over 150, 200 million views every month on Facebook because there's so many people that were not basically being serviced. So I always say, like, think about what's not being done instead of following what everybody else is already doing because there tends to be, um, you know, sort of, a, a, we all seem sometimes to be like sheep, right? It's like something's working, okay, let's all go over there and do what they're doing. And I think it's a lot of times you gotta look for what everybody's not doing and be the leader and do something that you really haven't seen before. And eventually you'll hit on something that a lot of people wanna hear about or see. How is it for you, Mara, when you're choosing women to interview at the summits and do you think about what's resonating in the world at large at that time, or is it individual stories, or how do you select? I think it's, it's individual stories that speak to a larger narrative. As I said, every story has to have, have a purpose. It has to have a mission. And so I think when you're you know, curating a summit or you're trying to figure out sort of your pitch uh, you know, for a new project or for a new job and the like, you have to really think cumulatively, what is the narrative that you want to say? And I think it's really important for people to go into all of these different conversations because stories are about persuading, it's about influencing and understanding who is my audience and what is the one thing that I want them to take away from. Um, you have to sort of have a very, very clear purpose and a clear understanding of, of mission um, and, and what you want people to remember about you. Uh, the other thing that's always really important that really works well for our speakers and, and for all the content um, all the content that we create is, you know, people mine their own experiences and they do it really artfully to be able to bring to life these, you know, amazing points or lessons learned that can speak to and impact a larger audience. Uh, and the other thing is they keep it simple. You know, it's sort of like the Goldilocks rule. You want to include just enough details to keep people, you know, on the edge of their seats and engaged, but not too much where they're going to be bored or tuning out. Um, so you always have to think about telling a story in a way where you artfully choose each detail that you think will speak to that one thing that you want people to take away and that will connect and engage with that specific audience. So really being focused about what are the details that you choose, how do you share, what are the bridges that you, that, that you make. Um, and the last thing I'll say is, you know, you don't want to be the hero of your own story. And what I mean by that is, you know, to your point, um, Des, about sort of, you want to hear about people's failures. You want to hear about their vulnerabilities, their rawness, their you know their their failures, because no success, you know we 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 at Forbes celebrate the people who have achieved the highest success, but behind that curtain are is massive failure and moments of doubt and insecurity, and so uh, you're never you know the hero of your own story because your story is always always evolving and it is never never a linear path. So true. I think what you said also about too much detail, people get into too much detail because you want to prove that what you're saying is correct or that they, you, you don't need to prove it in that first bit. Let them draw it out, like give them the top notes. It's like a fragrance. If I said, you know, it's got rose and Betty Ver and, you know, but you don't want me to be like, it's got 32% rose and 4%. It's like, I didn't need to hear that specifics. Like give it, romance me, bring me in at the top notes and let me hear your top notes. And then if I have a question, I'm going to dig more and ask for more details. But I think, and I've heard it on pitches at networks too, where somebody, I pitched a show with Darren Starr one time who created Sex and the City and a lot of amazing shows, a younger, which is on right now. And we rehearsed that pitch like 20 25 times, and he's like, you're going to crack a joke here. I'm going to say this. You're going to da, da, da. And he's like, if they want it, and I was like, but they need to understand that the character, it was about a model. And I said, but they need to understand her motivation. He's like, they don't care about her motivation. Let them fall in love with her first, and then we'll draw them into her backstory. But don't, I wanted to like fill in her backstory right up front. As you said, too much detail. Give them the top notes. Give them, you know, the, the major moments of your story and have a failing note in there for sure so that they can like dig in and sort of connect to you more. Yeah, and I think one of the things that we already touched upon are what's unexpected. You know, what is sort of something that you know you either are going to do in your storytelling, whether it be a story for a, a platform that you're creating or a story about yourself that's unexpected but really memorable. And certainly, I think that photo 
of Warren Buffett with the, his McDonald's and, you know, and it, it is very memorable and unexpected. And so just think about like what is sort of that one thing people wouldn't expect that you can sort of lay out for them. And I always find that that's what people wind up taking away. Yeah. Thank you guys. They're, we're out of time. But the one last thing I would say is definitely you got to, to activate this, you've got to work on it. You can't just think about it silently on the train and be like, oh, I, I rehearsed my story once in my head. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You have to say it out loud. You got to stand in front of a mirror. You got to call a friend, find a confidant, somebody that you trust to talk to, because inevitably when you sit down to tell it, it's going to come out way different than you rehearsed it silently in your head on the subway, I promise you. So take time to do it. It's a, it's a muscle. There's a storytelling muscle in your brain, and if you don't work it, you will not build it. And it is so worth working, because the stronger it gets, the quicker the stories come out, and the more fun people have with your story, and they can, they'll, they'll remember you. And your company, even this, I'm talking about getting job interviews, but that's not even, even within your company, you want to be able to tell your story and have other people in the company say, oh, he's a go-getter, she's a go-getter, she did this, and she failed, but she... Put her on that project. You want to get the plum jobs within your company. And if people remember your story and you stand out, they're going to remember your name and call you out to help them do something. So I would definitely say one thing take to heart, rehearse and practice, and then use it. Don't be afraid to get your story out there. Anyway, thanks, guys. Have a great day.